So again, like, you know, stuff like that, you know, pisses me off, you yeah. know, to no extent. Like you, you're ruining these girls and you're making them operate in dysfunction and they're thinking dysfunction is normal. And this is why people think wrong is right and right is wrong. I have been binge watching your your content, I will admit. And I okay, well, I appreciate that. I, appreciate that. <laughs> I, came, I, I don't even know it, you know? <laughs> and I came across, though, you telling an amazing story of the young lady that, you know, kind of prompted you to start your content. Now, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you mind sharing that story with the people? Oh, my gosh. This was a straw that broke the camel's back for me. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, before I started running my mouth <laughs> on social media, I was definitely... It was always been in my mind to like try to work with younger girls. I that I and I didn't want babies. I wanted like middle school girls and I wanted high school girls. Like, you know, right when you're hitting puberty, your hormones are going crazy, men are just looking, you know, the boys are just looking very delectable. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, you're hitting that time period and it's a way to do things in a healthy manner. So we lived in Baltimore. <laughs> it's Baltimore. And um <laughs> It was a decent, it was a, a very nice school, but it was just <laughs> the environment it was in. It was, yeah, a little hood. We, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna sugarcoat. It was a little hood. Um, and so you're gonna get what you get in that environment. So um, I got asked to uh, work with the girls to do this girls run. Um, it was supposed to be during that summer. And because I, I actively work out, I, work out now five times out of the week. So I actively work out. They realized I worked out, which is why they even asked me to start coaching the girls. Um and so I agreed to it. Well then it spinned off into well Tamara, can you do you mind mentoring you whatever? And there was this 12 year old girl um who just had a baby. And you know one of the guiding counselors had introduced me to her. And I guess she, I, I'm assuming she didn't come from the best background, one, because she was 12 and she had a baby. But then, two, it was like she needed shoes. Um, even, like, the shoes that she had on that particular day, I didn't tell this piece in my in my TikTok. But it just really wasn't appropriate for the how it felt outside. It was cool outside. And they looked like fluffy slippers. Like, she didn't have real shoes on. And this is a 12-year-old that just had a baby. So that tells you all rip. She can't afford to you know, raise a baby and whoever's taking care of her can barely afford to take care of her. Um, so <laughs> we exchanged numbers. I got introduced to her. We exchanged numbers. I was trying to see if I could have, if I had some shoes by chance that I, you know, that fit her. Um, so I tried to bring what I could, um, but I don't think any of my sizes fit her, but that's why I was like, you know, I see stuff like that. I was, you know, I'm gonna do what I can. Um, nonetheless, we exchanged numbers and I told her, you know, you know, hit me up anytime if you ever need somebody to talk to things of that nature, which she did twice. She did a couple, she did, a, she did twice. Um, she did reach out to me and I'll never forget the particular conversation. She was venting to me because she couldn't understand, um, why she couldn't go out and hang out with her friends and, um, how she, you know, felt like she made the best decision, you know, by having her daughter and, you know, she really wants to, you know, do the best for her daughter. But again, you know, hearing her talk and trying to convince herself, you know, that's what she wants to do with it. The conversation ended up turning her, turning into, she couldn't understand though, even though she wanted to do these things and she wanted to provide these things for her child. She's a kid, you know, and she yeah. wants to be able to go outside hang with her friends and not have to worry about, you know, she wants freedom, you know, and, and that's the thing. Like when you have a baby to a sense, your freedom changes. I'm not saying it's gone, but it changes. And then it having to explain to a child how to turn the child off and the mommy on. She's not, you know, in that time frame, And so that broke my heart. That broke my heart that, you know, hearing her not really understanding what she just did. She didn't yeah. understand what she just did. She just knew having a baby um, is what she was supposed to do. And I'm going to be honest. I don't know if that's what she was supposed to do. That's the choice that she made. And that has now changed the 
course of her life, you know, because she made that decision. But I just it don't sit right with me with a 12 year old getting pregnant. Now, I don't think it was anything like abuse. It didn't come across like that. I just think that it might have been, <laughs> you know, hormones raging. I mean, oh, it yeah. just didn't give like, you know, she was abused. But that's I'm my hood. I've seen that a lot going on. I mean, <laughs> exactly. <can't> <laughs> exactly. And so and then to um, here in hearing uh, i met another little girl um and it was like my same my same video where we were i was walking my daughter to class and she was walking her younger sibling to class and these are both middle school girls these are both middle school girls um and this other one she was walking next to me and she noticed my workout outfit she was like oh your outfit's cute and i said well thank you and she got to talking to me and she was like yeah i have to get up and get my you know my siblings dressed and i've helped feed them and she said then i um drop, you know take them to school and then i gotta um, make sure i get them to take them back and then she was like i'm the i can't remember how many but male i know it was about 10 or more kids wow. and her mom had just had more had one wow. more and the baby was maybe about eight months. So she just had the baby. And, you know, listening to her talk to me, you would have thought I was talking to another mom. So even though this little girl didn't have kids, still her childhood is being robbed because she's the co-parent. Yeah. And then your mom is still having babies. So, again, like, you know, stuff like that, you know, pisses me off, you yeah. know, to no extent. Like, you... You're ruining these girls and you're making them operate in dysfunction and they're thinking dysfunction is normal. And this is why people think wrong is right and right is wrong. Because yeah. what, what are we what are we doing? And for women to sit here and try to act like that, you know, we're these perfect angels and we make, you know, right decisions. No, we don't always get it right. And it should be OK to say I didn't get it right. Yeah. Like, you know. <clears throat> Even when I brought up, you know, divorces, it was not to shame anybody that got a divorce, but it's OK to say that, you know, I we didn't succeed at it. It's OK to say we failed at it. Right. You know, it, it's OK to say you didn't succeed at something. Um, and if you want to try again, try again. But next time, take the next time serious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, don't. <laughs> Because there are people that will get married four or five times. What are we doing? Because now you're treating marriage like a regular relationship. Yeah. So, again, I just think our our youth is watching. And they're watching how we're moving. And they're watching the decisions that we're making. And we're treating everything like, eh, eh, you know, like it's nothing, you know, or it'll be all right. And not taking consideration, you know, what type of impact these situations have. We're seeing the outcome in live time. <laughs> right now, <laughs> we're seeing it. So, yeah. I think that's part of the, you know, the, what sparked it. It's just I've I'm seeing how it's impacting the younger girls, um, growing up, and they deserve a better chance at life than what they're given. Um, oh. so, so yes, that's that's the story behind that. <laughs> Man, beautiful, beautiful, and and what you're talking about essentially is accountability. You know, yeah, and you created this world where. You know, women don't have to face accountability, accountability. at all. At, at all. Some point or another, you know, they can find a way out and, and be, become the victim in it. And I'm gonna be honest, that's why I tell people all the time, like I have a hard time giving money uh to a homeless woman. I'm gonna be real. You know how many bridges she gotta burn to <laughs> to be on that street? I'm sorry. <laughs> she have she have really you know, I never looked at it like that, but that's a good point. <laughs> I mean, people are waiting and will, especially an attractive, you know, woman. But any woman, people yeah. are waiting and willing to give women, you know, a second chance. So it's yeah. hard for me to to have that sympathy or empathy. Let's go.